Being born is one of the most dangerous things we'll ever do in our lives. It's so complex, a lot can go wrong. I'm going to talk about inducing labor. I'll discuss how inducing labor can cut some of the risks of childbirth, how induction works and some effects of induced birth. After about 40 weeks of pregnancy, babies are ready to be delivered and women go into labor. Many fatal risks occur in the very last stage of pregnancy, the labor itself. During labor, women undergo contractions, which stretch the cervix and push out the baby. This is called effacement. Contractions come at regular intervals, lasting 30 to 70 seconds. As time goes on, contractions get stronger and closer together. Contractions are produced by a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin consists of nine amino acids, which are the basis of proteins. They're linked in a chain, the carboxyl group of each acid being joined to the amino group of the next by a bond type OCNH. Oxytocin acts as a neurotransmitter. It's produced in the pituitary gland of the brain and then moves through the bloodstream and attaches onto proteins on receptor cells in the uterus. The uterus picks up the message from the brain to contract. In labor, large amounts of oxytocin are released. Unfortunately, Labor doesn't always go so smoothly. If a mother hasn't gone into labor after 41 to 42 weeks of pregnancy, there can be serious risks for both the mother and child. Luckily, we now have ways to save lives in these birth complications. Drug-induced labor contributed to this success. Doctors try not to interfere with natural labor unless it's necessary. I wanted to find out more, so I interviewed Dr. Graham Smith a researcher at Queen's University and practitioner at KGH. Dr. Smith told me induction is risky. Deciding if labor should be induced involves assessing the situation from mother and baby's perspective. If a mother already has a pre-existing medical condition that could result in complications such as diabetes or high blood pressure, induction is often recommended. Labor is also induced if there are complications during pregnancy. One common example of this is a bacterial infection called chorioamnionitis, which occurs when a mother's water breaks too early in pregnancy and bacteria spreads into the uterus. From a baby's perspective, this is extremely dangerous. It would be better to deliver the baby early than have them exposed to infection in the womb. Chorioamnionitis can also have long-term effects. One of the most common is cerebral palsy. Thirdly, there's a reduction of amniotic fluid, which the baby floats in, in the uterus. Amniotic fluid is very important. It absorbs any pressure on the womb, protecting the embryo inside. The levels go down if labor is overdue, and this is dangerous. A drug called Pitocin is often used to induce labor. It's an exact replica of natural oxytocin. If a mother's cervix is completely closed, a hormone called prostaglandin can be taken as a pill to initially open the cervix. Once the cervix is slightly open, pitocin can be administered. Because pitocin is destroyed in the gastrointestinal tract, it must be introduced by injection into the bloodstream and has a half-life of about three minutes. The dosage is slowly increased to make contractions stronger and closer together, mimicking natural labor. Inducing labor has serious risks attached and almost half the time results in a cesarean section. One risk is hyperstimulation. During the rest time in between contractions, oxygen flows through the blood to the baby. As you can see in this stimulation, as the womb contracts, oxygen flow slows down, and as it expands, oxygen flow speeds up. If too much pitocin is administered, contractions become too frequent and occur almost on top of each other. Overstimulated contractions can deprive babies of blood and oxygen and cause an abnormal heart rate. In this situation, a C-section would be necessary. Pitocin-induced labor is more painful than natural labor. In natural labor, endorphins are released by instinct to relieve pain. This is not the case with pitocin. Because of the discomfort, women take epidurals, which counter what Pitocin does and slow down contractions. Then, however, contractions seem to be sped up again, so more Pitocin is administered. Then, more epidurals introduced because of the pain. 
This cycle puts stress on the baby and the blood and oxygen flow is compromised. Oftentimes, a cesarean section is once again necessary. In natural birth, oxytocin spikes at the end of labor, stimulating fetal ejection and a faster birth. This boost does not occur with Pitocin, prolonging labor. It is clear that Pitocin has its limitations. The problem is, there aren't many alternatives that work as well. For instance, one alternative method of induction is misoprostol. This drug is used to deliver stillborns, but it triggers contractions that are too strong and harmful to, for a healthy baby. So for now at least, the search for drugs to further reduce the risks of our first big adventure childbirth must continue then tomorrow I'll turn 21 we'll script another show we'll play charades up in the Chelsea drink champagne